This section will be all about cam driven trigger wheels and the first one will be missing tooth on the cam. We're switching to this mechanical stimulator because the cam wheel runs in the same direction as the crank wheel clockwise, the same as a conventional engine. Top dead compression mark, missing tooth, sensor and wires back to primary trigger channel sometimes called crank. The cam wheel we are using is a 12 minus 1 missing tooth. You can disregard any influence this crank wheel will have because it will not be connected. It will merely be an indicator for timing. First thing you do is change the settings in Tuner Studio. So we go to Trigger Settings. We change this to Missing Wheel. 12 teeth is correct. Crank speed will now change to cam speed. One missing tooth is correct. We now have to ballpark our trigger offset. We guesstimate it the same as we did before. Line up top dead center on the crank and top dead center compression on the cam. Then it's how much we rotate the crank before the edge of the first tooth after the missing tooth hits the sensor. This looks like about 50 degrees. We'll try the 50 degrees. Burn that. Restart. And back to the rig. We need a bit more. So we'll try 65, burn that, close enough. We go back to Tuner Studio and make sure we're in waste spark mode, which is correct. So we'll go back to our rig and check the result. Top dead center on the crank is correct. Compression top dead center on the cam and overlap top dead center. Missing wheel cam in waste spark running correctly. Leaving everything the same, we change this now to sequential. Burn that. Restart. And check the result. Crank top dead center. Compression top dead center. No overlap top dead center. Sequential missing tooth is correct. Next we're going to test dual wheel on the cam in waste and sequential. We remove our missing tooth so it's uninterrupted. So we switch this to dual wheel. But where it says 12 teeth, we halve that to 6. Currently there's no selection for rotational speed of dual wheel in Tuner Studio, i.e. crank or cam, so we kind of fudge it by entering half the number of teeth in the primary box. And the way it works is because the cam runs at half the speed of the crank, and that is symmetrical uninterrupted so let's treat it as two crank wheels with half the number of teeth one after the other a six tooth crank wheel followed by another six tooth crank wheel then we need a cam tooth running on the same shaft a sensor and wired to our secondary trigger input sometimes called the cam back in Tuner Studio our primary trigger speed is blanked out for the reasons I mentioned and secondary tooth is blanked out because the default is that it has to have one Next we have to change our trigger angle offset and we do that the same way as usual. And for dual wheel it's first primary tooth after the cam tooth hits the sensor. We line up the leading edge of the cam tooth with its sensor until the red LED lights. The next primary tooth that triggers its sensor's red LED is near this yellow square. So that is a zero reference. Next we line up our top dead center and compression top dead center. And then it's how many crank degrees it takes to get our marker to its sensor. Rotate crank clockwise. One revolution. Half revolution. Primary tooth hit sensor. And it looks like another 65 degrees. So it's 360. Plus 180. Plus 65. Minus 720. Minus 115. Burn that. We're still in sequential. We want waste as the first test. Burn that. Restart. Top dead center. No bottom dead center. Compression top dead center. And overlap top dead center. Dual wheel waste park correct. We're in waste park. Now we'll go to sequential. Leave everything else the same. Burn that. Restart. Mm -hmm. 
We have top dead center, no bottom dead center, compression top dead center, and no overlap top dead center. Dual wheel sequential is correct. Now we'll look at the ignition channel outputs of a four cylinder in sequential mode by switching our LED to the different channels. In channel one, we see top dead center compression, no mark at the bottom means sequential, mark at top dead center crank, and none at the bottom. Change to channel two, our mark has moved 180 crank degrees. Change to channel 3. Another 180 crank degrees. Switch to channel 4. And another 180 crank degrees. A four stroke fires all cylinders in one engine cycle, so you should see four individual positions on the crank wheel because one revolution is one's engine cycle. And on a four cylinder, the crank throws are 180 degrees apart hence the 180 degree spacings. In this last ignition section we're going to cover the generic basic distributor. I'm basically going to explain this but visually. This is not a piston engine distributor but it's the same principle. For a four stroke you have a shaft with a cam with the same number of lobes as cylinders because all cylinders fire in one revolution of a cam driven distributor. The lobes open the points, which are basically a switch, and that grounds the coil. All it is is a mechanical switch sparking a coil to the accuracy of the lobe positions. The dwell is set by the point gap. The higher the lobe lifts the point arm, the longer it's open. And the spark timing is adjusted by rotating the whole body of the distributor. The coil is grounded and a spark comes out of its lead. The spark goes to the center post and comes out of the center pin. Spark then goes to the center of the rotor button and comes out of one of the arms which distributes it to a post that goes to one of your spark plugs which are connected in firing order of the direction of rotation of your rotor button. This is an electronic version of the same thing. This dizzy doesn't have the second channel for the inside slot so just ignore it. This uses an optical switch on the four outer slots instead of points and again it's the same number of slots as cylinders in one engine cycle. The dwell is set by the crank angle sensor electronics, but the timing is still set by rotating the distributor body. The crank angle sensor does simple triggering of a single coil every time it sees a slot, so again it needs a rotor button and distributor cap to distribute it to the correct cylinder. Electronic distributors are basically electronic switching of the same mechanical system. I don't think anyone's crazy enough to use points to trigger the ignition of a Speedwino because the electronic versions are more accurate and maintenance free. But in theory the points are just a switch so you could use that to ground a MOSFET and trigger some 5 volt signal to the Speedwino. To simulate a basic distributor you need the number of teeth as cylinders running at cam speed. So I blanked teeth on my 12 tooth cam gear to represent a 4 cylinder and connected the sensor to the primary input crank trigger channel. In Tuner Studio we have to set up the distributor. So under trigger pattern we go basic distributor. Most of this blanks out because in engine constraints it knows it's a four cylinder. So it knows the wheel should have four teeth. Then in spark output mode, we change that to single channel because it's a single coil. And we burn that. Restart. Only ignition channel one is firing. The result is four ignition pulses down the same ignition channel but with no fixed starting point due to there not being any location pulse. The offset is set the same way. Number of degrees clockwise from top dead center to the first tooth. Then look how many crank degrees it moved, which will enter into the trigger angle. For kicks, let's punch in 90 degrees offset and burn that. 90 crank degrees, which is 45 degrees on the cam wheel. This 90 degrees offset is unreasonable for a distributor, so you should only be using small amounts. And that is due to the rotor button phase angle. As an example of rotor button phase angle, imagine this is cylinder 1 ignition lead post, which lines up with this lug on the dizzy body. At 0 degrees offset, the rotor button is pointing at cylinder 1 post. But imagine now I punch in a 90 degree offset, which would put it over here. If it sparked now, it wouldn't be directed at the correct post, so it would misfire. Keep rotor button phase angle in mind when using distributors. We are now going to test our little 36 minus 1 steel tooth wheel with an actual VR sensor for a car.
This VR makes 15 volts peak to peak at idle, but when you rev it it'll make a lot more. Also it's sinusoidal, so it'll need converting to a 5 volt square wave by a VR conditioner. We then set the jumper to VR on the Speedwino. We now have to change Tuner Studio to our 36 minus 1 missing tooth wheel. So we change this to 36. And because it's on the crank we have to have wasted spark which is correct. So we'll burn that. Restart. And our VR setup is running fine. For our speed test, we set our running dwell back to 3. Burn. <laughs> 